my dreadlock story. Um, one, why did I decide to get dreadlocks? And when? It was five years ago. Um, I had just graduated. I had just graduated high school. And the boyfriend that I was with at the time, which I was also living with, uh, we broke up. So I wasn't living there anymore. So I decided instead of going home to my parents, I was going to go on an excursion and try to live out on my own. And uh, I had a car my, that my parents helped me furnish. And I also, um, you know, was welcome to come back. I just uh, didn't want to because I knew there were consequences. I would have to obey by their rules and live their lifestyle. And I'm grown. So I decided to rough it out and live on my own. I uh, found some roommates. Um, I worked. I... Um, I did all that I could, really, to just, you know, not have to go back to my parents' house. But during all that, I had a really good friend, um, well, I had two really good friends at the time, which I am no longer friends with because they ended up using me like most people do. They, like, I don't know, I didn't even know they were using me until it was just evident that they didn't want to do anything for me. So if you have friends like that, let's all together say, F them because that is I don't know I have I have yet to s make close friends again because I was afraid I am afraid of that happening again they took everything they you know and when things weren't going right they slandered my name with all my other friends and stupid stuff like that I didn't lose anything and all that but I did get I was just perturbed because I thought we were more connected than that so whatever, those people are out of my life and have been for the last five years. Anyhow, um, so uh, anyway, I had a good, two good friends. One of them was dating this guy named Derek, and he, I still see him every now and then. He's he's doing great, but he was into string cheese, and if you know who the string cheese incident is, they're they quit, but they kind of get back together every now and then, at least once a year, I think to play every summer or New Year's or something like that. But anyway, um, he, they were coming to Knoxville and that's pretty close to where we're at or where I was at at the time. So we were like, oh, all right, well, let's get all our stuff together and go. He fronted all his money because he was working at Pizza Hut, I think, or something like that. But he spent, it was like $30 a ticket or something. So he bought all of our tickets in hoping that we would pay him back. I was working at KFC or something, you know, an 18 year old's job, um, and I paid him back for my ticket, but they were all supposed to pay me for gas because I was the one with the car, and none of them paid me gas. I ended up having to pay gas all the way there, but I ended up spending a lot more money than any of them. And, well, I mean, it's uh, exceptionally for, you know, Derek. He, he did his part, and I have no complaints with him. But the two girls or whatever that were riding along, they needed to pay a lot more, especially since they weren't driving, they weren't paying for gas. Uh, he had a problem with them later because they didn't pay for their tickets. So he basically got these kids in for free. It's just very irresponsible and shady, these people just going to use people to their dry and then move on and not talk to them anymore. So whatever. Um, yet again, they're not my friends anymore. It's just, this is something that I haven't been able to tell anybody because my new friends, I like to tell, not t talk about my old friends and hoping that they won't end up like, like that. So the string cheese concert, there were these, um, there was these three ladies and they were hanging out selling, um, oops, sorry, selling, um, vintage clothing and I sat there and talked to them for a little bit and they just they were just talking about how you know we should recycle and just really good things for the world and stuff like that I was really looking for someone to listen to because I don't know you know I don't I didn't know exactly where I was going or anything like that or what my next plans were and really didn't care so yeah I needed some adults to who lived a I don't want to say their life is simple, because it's really not simple. It's actually harder to live out on the road, but a life that's different. I needed to hear from people who chose a different life than what our society has given us, and 
I was so moved by how positive they were and how, you know, even though they're like, even though we don't have, you know, the luxury of going and having money all the time or uh, having, having money all the time or going to the grocery store all the time or having the convenience for this and that, they're still super happy human beings. I just believe that, you know, I can do that. I can, I can do this. And um, only one of them had dreadlocks. And she was working, I believe that particular lady was working on um, another lady's dreadlocks. And I just, when I was looking at it, she was explaining what each dread like should mean. And each dreadlock is, is, is a story because I don't know if people will do their dreads all at once, but I ended up having to do mine over a course of three or four months because of those two crappy people that were supposed to be my friends. They said, they said they would help me with my dreadlocks and then ended up not helping me. So I ended up making a decision and then I had to follow through with it, but that's life. That's what I learned from that. Like you can't depend on other people to help you push through to your goals. You ha it's in you. You have to unlock that yourself. And for you to depend on anyone else, it's kind of a stupid selfish act because you just are lazy and don't want to do it. So anyway, that's what I learned from that experience. Like this whole dreadlock experience has been an experience of learning and just trying to take in as much as I can and applying it to my life. So yeah. Um, so that's, that's basically what made me decide I wanted dreads. I was, she, she also mentioned uh, liberation, uh, spiritual aspect to it. Uh, it's, it's where you free yourself, you rebirth, you, uh, things like that. So I, I thought that was really interesting and that would be, it's a really interesting way to think about it because if you grow your hair, you're basically holding on to all the hairs that have left your head, you're holding on to all of your memories that you've had in the last, since, you know, you brushed your hair. And it's a very magical thing if you really think about it, because, you know, since I'm holding all these things, the day that I brush them or cut them off, um, it, it's a point in my life that, one, I get to let go, two, I get to start over, and three, I get to... Okay, my camera cut off. But anyway, it's a personal satisfaction when you set a goal for yourself and you accomplish it. That is such an empowering energy that is so hard to conjure up out of nothing. So, I mean, without planning, anyway. But yeah, so if you um, are getting thinking about getting dreads, I think you should do it. Uh, consequences of getting dreads, you will be outcasted just a wee bit, but know that you're making a stand. You're not only setting a goal for yourself, but since the majority of the world is freaking racist, you are also making another statement of it. A lot of people um, don't know, but dreadlocks came from the islands. It didn't come from any particular race, really. Um, whenever missionaries were going around and, sh you know, discovering lands and islands and things like that, they found that a lot of their uh, people had dreadlocks because it was just easier to take care of and freaking racist about stuff. It's kind of annoying, actually, but I run into that every day since I'm in the freaking south um, there's just so many rednecks everywhere, and I'm sorry if you're a redneck, um, but some of your folks who represent themselves as rednecks as well are pretty ignorant. So, I don't know, they're like, oh, she must be half black, and I'm like, actually, I'm not. I'm, I'm not black at all. So I thought that was cool, because I was representing something, saying that it doesn't matter and you need to stop labeling people. I think they, like, we need to evolve past that. But anyway, I'm, I'm done rambling about that. So yeah, that's my dreadlock story. And to anyone who's doing it, much love. Um, I feel your pain, or I feel your love too, because it's, it's, all, it's all love. <laughs> Take it easy.